Namaste angels. I'm going to do another client reading. Um, this one is for somebody for whom I've read before, although it's been some time, it probably was around July, August, the summer. And that time we did it um, over the phone. So this is going to be the, her first um, video reading from me. As I recall, she is a Leo. Don't quote me. Pretty sure though. A Leo, um, a single Leo, but there is somebody to whom she felt an attachment uh, but I, I don't really believe anything was actually going on at the time so i'm pretty sure a single leo and this in any case um this would be reflective of fire energy this eternal flame card and as well as representative of um, any kind of union we can figure out what's going on there opening to emergence so this is like rising from the ashes like maybe she um you know, been working th like the, not not unlike the rest of us, working through uh, karma and different things, and you know, climbing up and finally having reached a point where, um, pretty much surrounded by brightness here, sunshine, and even some white light, um, continued healing, but able to stand on one's own two feet and and can just continue to grow spiritually, emotionally, just getting stronger, physically. A ton of flame. And meditation, which of course helps with all of this. And there's so many different kinds of meditation. Like we do not have to sit Indian style in a, you know, in a pose or whatever. You can, um, you know, not knocking that either. But we don't have to do that. Like people sometimes don't seem to realize that meditation can be, you know, just as you're sitting at your kitchen table or whatever, you tune everything else out, you know, close your eyes or not, or however you feel comfortable. Just as long as you're able to uh, connect and like I said, um, tune everything else out and clear your mind. That's meditation. So, and prayer is also meditation. The, the two go hand in hand. You can say my dreams are coming true. I'm manifesting. Or you can say, God heard me, the, whatever you're into or both. Right. Um, there may be some air and or water, um, sign, person or persons uh impactful upon her and and or her situation right now or she could have um this energy too of a water sign i don't know her like sun uh, moon and, and rising signs or anything like that that could also be coming into play like i said as i recall she's a leo so i think we talked about that because i'm a i'm a leo rising any case, um, now opening, speaking of air, opening to listening, which is a card of communication, um, which air signs um, are all about communication. This one most specifically connects to um, or relates to Aquarius for me um, because of the star and like electronic communication. And whether or not she has any Aquarius or under air in her chart, this could be showing up just because that's what's going on in the universe right now. Right? We just we're still in this energy. It's very new. Uh, just two days two days ago, um, there was a new moon in Aquarius, and you know, just yesterday was the uh, partial solar eclipse. Uh, you know, also like hinging on that moon energy. Um, yesterday was also. Um, Chinese New Year, there's all kinds of very high energy things going on. So we moved out of the energy of that fire rooster into the dog um, as of yesterday. And um, so a lot of this, this energy of communication just flowing. Also the air and water combination um, may be connected to her or may not, but it is also something that is surrounding us. We have Mercury, which is a ruler of air sign Gemini and also a ruler of Virgo. Um, and Venus, which is also a ruler of, of Gemini, as well as Libra and Taurus, um, in both of those in Pisces. So rulers of air signs, which again are connected to communication, connecting with water or our planet connecting, Venus connecting with with this energy of Pisces and Neptune. So that's going on too. And it's, it's heightening everything for everybody, our intuition, our psychic awareness, and we're, we're being called to pay closer attention, to listen and to watch the signs and all of these things. 
and opening to miracles, which of course come about um, when we do meditate, when we do pray, when you know, we do have faith, we do manifest. Um, if you believe it, then you can receive it, whether you consider yourself um, you know, a spiritual person or a religious person or none of the above, you know, an atheist, if you believe that it's, it's like scientific law too, that that's how you bring stuff in and that everything is energy and matter. I'm on that note, I'm think I'm going to go ahead and cut these. Very nice. And coming to the universal heart, Jesus Christ, this is, um, provides healing uh, of, you know, this is a master healer and, you know, provider of master healing of the ages. They want me to look at this too, which is a very Pentecostal dove. Maybe that's why they want me to look at it, um, you know, in connection to the universal heart. This is about new beginnings, uh, rebirth uh, and, and new birth as well. Um, as is the event of the Pentecost. So again, it, it makes sense for these two to be coming together. And, and, you know, we are in that time of year. This is the you know, month of Lent. After Lent, of course, is the crucifixion and Easter, re the resurrection. And the re Pentecost is a celebration of the resurrection. It's when not only Jesus, but other quote unquote saints, according to the scriptures, were raised. And we celebrate that. And it's new birth. Uh, it's rebirth because these people who were, you know, essentially dead, risen again. Right. Born again. And the same thing can happen to us without going through that physical death through this healing. And here we have more of this um, air and water. And it is very specifically for me, um, Aquarius and Pisces. We have um, this star on this angel's um, forehead, like over her third eye, which is about communication telepathically. She behind her is a moon. The moon in the tarot represents the sign of Pisces. She is clearly a water bearer standing here holding this vessel um, with water trickling down into the water. She's standing in a pool where some very translucent fish are, you know, from where the, some very translucent fish are trying to escape. They are representative for me of Pisces as a, as a is the moon again. Um, overall, this card also represents for me the divine feminine in the tarot, the queen of fire, the queen of wands, which as I said, I believe that um, uh, this woman for whom I'm reading is, is a Leo. Um, the queen of wands, which does represent the sign of Leo as well as Sagittarius and Aries also in general would depend, um, you know, um, regardless of Zodiac represents the divine um, feminine as well, because she is confident and creative and can bring about, you know, whatever kind of abundance she needs in her life um, through her passions and her creativity. She can make things. I can do something. I can pursue something about which I'm passionate that is going to help to make me abundant, whether that's, you know, in the areas of finance or material or love or, or you know, combinations of those. So this will be the divine feminine's higher self to her. The masculine that I'm picking up, whether she knows, knows physically him yet or not, I think she does though. Um, him about her, because otherwise I would have done it differently, but I'm guided to do it this way. Like there is somebody there, um, even if she is single. Him about himself. and their connection or union as a whole overall. The, what the masculine here would have her to do to help to, you know, facilitate this union, regardless of when it is to happen, what he himself is willing to, what the universe would have the two to do, and the outcome. Sorrow. So she's in a place where she, uh, while, while rising from the ashes and different things, there are, there is some sadness. Um, and I know she did lose a very close friend, somebody that she called her brother. Um, and it was right with those, um, passings that I had just seen and predicted. I think it was like the same day she posted this. Very, very sad. Um, 
yeah, it was that week when I was talking about um, John 3.16 and how, you know, God gave his only son the gift. He, for he so loved the world that he gave his only son. So that, that could be part of this sorrow too. Um, there could be some stuff attached in, in, in part why she's single too. Some stuff um, that also needs to be forgiven, released, um, like resentment and regret and things from old, you know, old past hurts, old relationships of which she needs to let go as well um, coming through with this. Masculine about her enchantment. This, I'm picking up and I'm on a masculine entire yourself, and this card comes through with both. We have here like this blue ray, um, which would be like Venus, the feminine planet of uh, love, and this red ray, the masculine Mars, the masculine planet of love, both coming through to heal her. So this could be in part representing her um, inner masculine and feminine alone uh, as well coming through with this healing and this woman you can see she's been through it she's got some scars here on her face you know um so she's a survivor clearly and is still despite everything she's been to been through willing to be in this place of surrender and to allow for healing like not um she knows that's not it. That's not all. Like we, I went through this for a purpose, a, a higher purpose. This is just the beginning. These little, you know, these little scars. And so she's allowing for that, that healing. She's in full surrender. Um, masculine about himself. Blessings. These are spiritual gifts. This is physical. This is um, increased awareness. Yeah. And that, that's, in part, I mean, Mary is all about the blue, um, but that's in part why all this blue is coming through to me. It's coming through as like psychic awareness and possible water sign, although that's not um, what I associate with, with Mary. But this is a lot of, everything here is about healing and releasing um, like past energy, um, as is this. Transience, which is a, I mean, clearly about allowing not only surrender, but a surrender and allowing oneself to be healed from head to toe, inside and out, every which way. So she is guided already from the first cards, um, the first four cards, to like let the universe do um, what it would with her, which is actually what Mary is famous for saying. Uh, Luke 1... It might be one, three, six. Um, let it be done to me as you say. That was Mary when uh, Gabriel came to visit her and explained to her through what she was going to be going. You know, it was like, I surrender to divine will. Let it be done to me as you say. That's what's coming through with this. Overall, here's what more of that fire energy and messages from afar. So more of this need to listen and pay, pay attention to signs and sinks and one's intuition and like learning to discern what's illusion, what's a real message that's coming through and then to trust it once you've decided, you know, which is which. What would the masculine half or being um, involved here have her to do a work on? The gateway. So like if you feel like you're being faced with the next phase and you have to like enter the next phase, you are guided to do that. You're guided to step into the next phase. And again, re re first releasing um, whatever you are, you're able of the past hurt and then whatever you're not able that needs that requires heal healing, surrendering and allowing for that to happen. The masculine willing himself to do, this is the listening as well. So communication, perhaps by an electronic means, something may come into you, um, or you telepathically in your dreams, all these things, because you're an electronic being too, um, energy, right? You could be 
receiving communications in that way as well. And what we both have, or both beings to do, abundance. Um, so when you do that meditation, that opens, that allows for flow of abundance to come to, come to you and from you. Love is basically what everything is at the end of the day. And love, in order to work properly and be healthy, um, needs to be able to flow both ways. And so when we follow our guidance, when we take the time to connect with nature and to clear our minds and to hear, listen and hear, we open up like the flow, the traffic pattern um, going both ways. So the abundance in all forms can come to us. So this is financial, this is material, and this is love as well. Um, also an earth sign may be involved. An earth sign other than Venus, but, but Venus herself too. Again, she is ruler of Taurus and she is the planet and goddess of love, money, popularity, just abundance pretty much, period. And outcome, heaven on earth. So this outcome is basically a summation of these things through which I went because heaven on earth, what this card is about is if we want to attain this sort of feeling of heaven on earth, we have to vacate a space to allow for these new wonderful things that are being born and reborn in our lives to enter. In order to vacate a space, we have to let go of the old stuff that's blocking its way, right? We gotta, it's like, um, I'm trying to fit everything into a small apartment. I'm, I'm getting new furniture. I cannot fit my old bed, you know, that I've been, that my mom bought when I was a teen that I've kept all this time. I can't fit that in with my new bedroom set that I've bought for myself now that I'm an adult and I'm working. I got to get rid of the old bed. Even if I'm attached to it, I liked it. I scratch, scratch my name in it. You know, I had it for so long. It's near and dear to me, but I got to let it go. Like we had our time and it no longer serves, um, you know, my life. And so I have to release it in order to make room, a s actual space for the new bed that I'm going to sleep in that is going to serve me. That's not going to hurt my back, you know, because it's, <laughs> this one is posturpedic and, you know, I need the support now that I'm, I'm grown up and all that kind of stuff. So I need to make space for the new. That's what this card is about. And that basically summarizes all of this. Now, another cross spread beginning with mature man, which is represents like a very authoritative and kind of um, Aries kind of energy. It's it's definitely of Mars, could be Scorpio too, but not like in the sexy, aggressive, um, masculine planet of love or warrior, um, you know, defender, anything protector, anything like that. It's this kind of, as you can see, uh, just father or boss or somebody that is manipulative and, and over you. Um, and open to gifts. So I think one of the gifts, and he's gone already, I was going to say one of the gifts that's coming is to learn how to cut cords away from energy like that. Gifts. And open to short-term heartbreak, which could be connected to the sorrow and your loss. Again, my condolences for all of that. Gifts. And opening to Ice Queen, which does for me represent the planet Venus and um, air signs as well. Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. Ice Queen. And that mature man is back. So this could be like Mars and Venus together. Um, and if so, right now she would have her back to him because this is, again, not, not the attractive Mars energy. This is this overbearing one. And that really could be your inner masculine because I do sometimes associate not only Aries um, or Scorpio because of Mars with that overbearing possible um, fire energy, but Leo too, you know, 
I always say, <laughs> um, you know, with all, all love, as, you know, as a Leo rising myself, there, there is that aspect of Leo that can be overbearing to that. So that may be your inner masculine needing to be toned down a bit as well um, and to and go into that surrender, be softened up a bit, maybe by the uh, Aquarius moon, because the moon represents feminine energy. And for me, it gets more specific as to like feminine energy of surrender is what it represents. In any case, coming to soulmate now. And the overall energy is wallflower, which for me rep tends to represent the signs of Capricorn again. Um, and the planet Saturn and that like restrictive energy. Scorpio, again, just mentioned them in connection to Mars and also Gemini. It's like this kind of image energy that of, of a person. I don't know if you can see in this picture, this there's a woman here dancing. You can see her silhouette. There's a man here dancing. And then there's this person just sitting there, not dancing, not engaged. So they're at the party. Somebody liked them enough to invite them. Um, but they're not engaged. And that's very Capricorn. That's very Scorpio. That's very Gemini. Like, you know, okay, like I'll come, but I really don't want to be bothered and I'm not going to participate in, I'm not going to take an active, uh, willing role, like even in my own life and my own fun. So the guided to do that, um, with this, I also connected to, um, what's the name? I forget the name of the woman, the woman's name now that sings the song, but there's a song, I hope you dance. Um, like if you get the opportunity, if you get the chance, I hope you dance. And it's about really if, if one getting an opportunity for love, like don't sit it out and allow that to pass you by. Um, so this could represent you and or. Union. I wanted to make sure that I was being guided to do that. <laughs> um, the recent past, the near future, the masculine higher self, blocks to union, the feminine can do, the masculine can do, further advice from the universe for both, and the outcome. Okay, divine being or couple, true love, true love, very nice. Recent past, gifts, again, I think this was about increased awareness, psychic awareness, intuition, like a promotion, a raise, a gift from the universe, basically. Near future. Dealing with some past love or past life issue could be the return of a true love, an ex or something. Coming back. Masculine higher self-spiritual growth. So I just, I said this is connected to gifts and psychic awareness and spiritual awareness. And here is the reaffirmation of that spiritual growth connected to these gifts blocks to progress in a union that Venus has her back to everything and everyone. Um, she will be softened up though. She ha has been softening up. She will continue to soften up because that Venus is going to be in Pisces for around three weeks. She entered on the 11th. So um, Pisces is going to make her a much more warmer, uh, <laughs> a much warmer being. Pisces is very sensitive and emotional. It's a water sign. Um, what the feminine can do. Children. These are siblings. You have something to work out with your siblings. I don't even know if you have. So we've never discussed you having siblings. But I... Um, oh, maybe this is... Maybe this is the gentleman that you called your brother. Because I just heard, like, siblings. But maybe they're not blood siblings. Maybe this is still part of the sorrow that you're going through that's been coming through thus far. That's a possibility. I'll, I'll wait to talk about that one more. Um, yeah, I think this could be coming through with him. 
on your side, you got the children. And like I said, I heard and felt siblings. And I even have only on my left arm, like goosebumps. I don't know if you can see the hair on my arm is standing up. In the long distance, obviously there's distance now between you. Now it's my left leg too. Um, distance now between you as he is on another plane. Um, so I think that this, what's coming through is about the two of you there. Further advice from the universe, short-term heartbreak. I'm sure this is connected to this too. Um, and just that you're going to continue to get better and stronger. Obviously, the, the bond, you know, will never, that it's never going to go away. But it can strengthen you. And you should, you know come around, you know, nobody's rushing you, but you should come around to being social, um, again and getting back out there. Um, even without him is what I'm feeling. And the outcome here, ice King and the masculine planet of love, the set, the, this is the sexy one that I was talking about. Um, the aggressive one and the love one. And he it now, he and Venus are facing each other. So when you are ready, again, nobody is rushing you. When you are beginning to heal from this um, loss that you have every right, you know, to take your time in mourning, you are guided to, again, like, get back in the game. Um, spend some time being social Spend some time hanging out with other adults, doing things that you enjoy doing, maybe dancing if, if you're into that at all. Um, and, and you will find like a Mars to match your Venus and it will be something real. We go to the angel tarot. I'm beginning with the king of earth, who is generous, professional, responsible, and practical. A successful time. Confidently accept opportunities that you're offered. You have the Midas touch. Uh, so this could be involved with work and just, you know, doing really, really well in, at, at your career, thriving. Um, this romantic opportunities too. Opportunities in general that come your way, you will be successful in those. So you have to let go of like the feelings of like the expectation to not be successful. Um, and you know, not just in work, but in areas of being social and, and romance and all those things too. And stop like expecting lack. That's what you need to do. Fears surrounding money, which I don't feel that that's what it is. I feel it's more connected to other things. Um, also the wisdom to accept help from others and uncertain self-employment. This for me, it's, it's like fear of abandonment. Um, and maybe you're feeling some, some of that with your friend too, your brother that you were like left behind. Um, so you, you need, you know, again, take your time getting over that, but like be mindful of, we don't want to hold on to feelings of lack. And I don't have, especially when like the, the universe wants to pre pre present us with its gifts. The King of Earth can also be an actual person as a court card that is impactful upon you. Um, a Capricorn, Virgo, or Taurus, or somebody likened to those traits or attributes. And now the Five of Earth um, is back. And opening to the Six of Water. Memories from your history or childhood. Issues regarding children and romanticizing the past. So this is another card that comes up for me often with like connection to siblings and childhood friends or longtime friends and all those kind of things. It's also, um, another note, a like past life relationship and soulmate type of card. Um, so we may see something to that effect as well show up here. Five of Earth and more Capricorn. So you may know one um, or an Earth sign may be impactful. Um, ego is the devil in the traditional tarot. Major Arcana card number 15 um, is the devil. 
a false sense of entrapment. It's about feeling like stuck and like or lost or whatever when you're not really. Um, it's, it's kind of like self-imposed blocks. Being overly focused upon material things and negative or fear-based thoughts like fear of abandonment, fear of um, like just being alone and not differentiating the, you know, the difference between being alone and being lonely because they're not the same. So like there's fear of being alone and then because we don't really realize that like alone isn't so bad. I like me. It's lonely that's not good, but I don't have to manifest loneliness into my life. You know, that would be self-imposed. Five of Earth and the moon. So there's stuff going on that we don't know. We're not meant to know everything, um, but there is some, some of it they want to share, but they're show, sharing it intuitively or through other gifts um, through what you've been given. And we got to learn to pay attention and use that intuition. Important psychic insights, events behind the scenes, release fears that hold you back. So this is another one about letting go of fear and, you know, that stems from past situations, maybe your childhood with that six of water having shown up. And this also represents water. The, the moon represents the sign of Pisces that I mentioned earlier. Um, so this can be a Pisces or water sign person that's impactful upon your life too. Um, or again, it can be um, the universe with um, right now, both Venus and Mercury are in Pisces. Mercury entered today, as a matter of fact. Uh, today is February 17th, right? Yes. Um, Mercury entered Pisces today. Venus entered on the 11th. The sun is entering Pisces this week. I mean, like, there's going to be so much stuff going on in Pisces. Again, this very sensitive and emotional uh, energy. I'm going to go ahead and cut. And speaking of water signs, it is release or death in the traditional tarot, which represents the sign of Scorpio, the end of a phase or situation. So like I said, about the gateway card, you're about to be presented with a new phase that you're required to enter because one is ending the end of a phase or situation. Also spiritual transformation, more again, psychic awareness, increasing, you're, you're changing in that area. Um, let go of the, the old you, like the old you is dead and gone. And so it's time to move on. And more Scorpio, perhaps, or fire sign. It's the emperor, major arcana card number four, um, which represents for me the planet Mars and the sign of Aries, but also the sign of Scorpio, um, at least sometimes too, because Mars is a co-ruler of Scorpio. Organization and logic, structure and discipline and leadership. I'll put these both here. One jumped out of my hand. I don't know if you saw that and landed in the spot itself. And one I was about to place nicely. So that's the one that's on top here. The one I was putting down. The, other, the one on the bottom laid itself there. Here on the masculine side, so 10 of water, a contented and rewarding family life. Your emotional material needs are met and you have trustworthy relationships. This is about spending time around people that you enjoy spending time around, family, friends. Surrounded by the sun with Archangel Uriel, happy outcome, brilliant new ideas that lead to success if you have confidence in yourself. The sun represents the sign of Sagittarius, while the earth's star the sun rules the sign of leo this can you know represent other fire signs too not just sagittarius leo aries and here is more hurt here on the side of the masculine it is the three of air great sadness perhaps involving a direct air sign great sadness take time to heal there's a need to forgive yourself and others so we're getting back to that like that first row and that first spread of all those things that we needed to release, beginning with the sorrow. 
kind of the feminines. The seven of water, which represents for me like the planet Neptune and the energy of Pisces and illusions and fantasies and dreams and maybe being confused, a complex decision. The need to do research, stop procrastinating. Surrounded by the star, which represents the sign of Aquarius and the planet Uranus. So here we have the Pisces and the Aquarius um, sitting here together. Happy times make positive, optimistic, long-term plans. You are on the right path. This can also represent communication and maybe specifically electronic communication and or telepathic communication. And in the feminine subconscious, the ace of fire, an exciting new opportunity, career advancement, change your life now. Just keep it, keep going down that um, pathway. But there's worry here in the middle, expecting the worst. This is what I was talking about, the lack, like expecting lack. This is it. Expecting the worst. And that brings on, uh, brings about self fulfilling prophecies. That's the manifestation of negativity into our own lives about which I was speaking and also sleepless nights, perhaps just staying up, um, overthinking and overanalyzing every damn thing and not getting, being able to get any rest as a result at the root, the two cards, the one that the universe, Oh, wow. Look at that. <laughs> look at that. Uh, the eight of fire means that there's movement, right? Things are even where, where a situation may have been stagnant before it is moving. Even if you can't see it, even if it's behind the scenes, there is movement. It's crossing, um, the star also and the eight of fire can also be about communication. So this can definitely uh, be about communication and against perhaps specifically electronic events moving at a fast pace. Delays are over and many things are happening at once. <laughs> Top that is the progression moving on to the next um, number in the, the theme of fire. Don't give up. Protect that which you've created. Have courage and believe in yourself. So this is definitely a uh, warrior spirit that even if you feel down, like I can't move on any further. And again, maybe it has to do with mourning and loss and, um, you know, not really completely feeling yourself. The universe is letting you know it. It will give you another burst. And please don't give up now because so many things are about to happen that are just absolutely awesome in your life. New opportunity, dreams coming true, prayers being answered. Um, you're going to have to choose. There's so many options. You're going to have to pick which one if you stop worrying and bringing about potential negative instead, because our thoughts become our reality and what we speak over our life becomes, you know, our reality, the heart of the matter, the lovers, this can also be about the need to make a decision. Um, and often between two people, maybe you got, again, two male potential male suitors coming your way. Or, or that have already shown up and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, the lovers represents the sign of Gemini specifically, or per perhaps another air sign, Aquarius, Libra, intimate relationships, carefully weigh your decisions, good health. And I will further clarify these as well with romance cards, beginning with calling in your soulmate. Your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help bring you together. And opening to deception, someone is wearing a false self mask in this relationship, not being their whole and or true selves. Calling in your soulmate. And separation. Time apart from your partner is on the horizon. calling in your soulmate and chemistry the strong magnetic attraction here this can often be sexual and I think it might be right now calling in your soulmate and religious factors your love life is influenced by a religious upbringing and spiritual path uh, these can be ideologies and um, with which we were raised and different things um, that we may have learned from society and ways that um, things that we feel like this isn't appropriate, that's not appropriate. And just, you know, living by somebody else's standards and beliefs as opposed to our own.
overall energy is getting to know each other. As you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. Top the 10 of water, finances and career. Financial issues are a factor in your love life right now. I would say they're positive because with the 10 of water, as you can see, it's about a contented and rewarding family life. And it says your emotional and material needs are met. So if that comes into play, um, whether it's for you directly and having to do with your masculine side or a masculine um, energy in your life, all is well in that area of finances. Things have improved. And we, we saw that, that we saw that coming with, um, energy like the King of, um, earth and stuff. And I was just wondering as I was shuffling, I didn't even realize <laughs> that how long I was taking shuffling and the, you know, that there was a pause, um, in the recording because I was thinking there might be somebody at, at, at your job, like that came through as I was shuffling. So you would know um, better than me and it might be connected to that here atop the sun is codependency addictions are affecting your romantic life this is any kind of codependent situation not necessarily substance abuse but it can be that too and that may be connected to this to your loss here um as this sits here above this three of air, but things are going to get better in that area too. You're going to be moving into, you know, calmer, stiller waters or a, a place of more peace, um, soon and enjoying bliss in your life. Atop the seven of water past life relationship. You've known each other before. So that, like I was saying, there could be some exes or or maybe an ex in particular returning, and you're going to have to make a decision as to whether or not you're interested in that sort of thing. Let's hop the star and the prayers haven't been answered. Maybe this is for what you've been asking, in which case you're going to want to make the effort. Great love is worth taking the steps you're guided to take. Even if there's steps in your own life, like, you know, and stages and things through which you have to go. And you might say, well, what does this have to do with a partner? Um, as we heal ourselves, as we delayer from our own, you know, uh, ego and um, inhibitions and ideologies and things that have been keeping us um, stuck and asleep, uh, then that also is making an effort toward not only our love life, but our life period and flow of abundance in our life of all areas. Here atop the ace of fire, express your love. Go ahead and make the romantic gesture. So if presented with this opportunity, a brand new opportunity for love um, and perhaps sex too, the ace of fire, ace of wands is like probably the most phallic card in the deck um, and can often be connected to that. And since I felt something about sex a moment ago, I'm just going to throw that out there too. That's a possibility. And if it's something you're considering, you know, it is, it, you know, it comes with the guidance too, that that's okay to do as well. Atop the nine of air and this worry, you don't, no need to worry. Just keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectation. So this could be somebody, like I said, that's different. For example, it could be somebody at work and maybe you have a thing, an ideology, a belief system where it's inappropriate to date somebody from your job. Well, this is a different situation. Keep an open mind. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be that. I mean, just, that was the first thing that came to mind. So maybe it is that. <laughs> um, but any kind of situation that, that's unlike what you would normally do. There's a lot of um, these unions where they are, you know, you know what's called uh, May-December relationships. One is much older. Um, often the female or feminine is much older. The, you know, so that's non-traditional. Um, there are different races and cultures and religious backgrounds, ethnicities, you know, all kinds of differences. And it, it's kind of... Um, 
like a prerequisite for divine union. There has to be like there's at least one of these very stark differences. And part of the journey, a good part of it is like getting past that um, to the point where you truly don't care if anyone else cares. If You know, you just don't. Um, atop the eight and nine of fire is let go of control issues and allow the situation to unfold naturally. And at the heart of the matter, atop the lovers, love is coming your way, but you're going to, again, just right underneath the keep an open mind, it was sort of repeating themselves by saying, stay optimistic. So not only keep an open mind, but keep a positive open mind. Positive thinking and faith is what's going to bring you romance. That's how the law of attraction works. Um, I want to further clarify if I can this codependency I'm going to take the next upright card it is this one wedding this situation involves marriage so maybe somebody is married and that is what goes against your upbringing I can't date a married man I'm not knocking that I, I don't you know necessarily um you know I don't disagree or or, or agree I'm I'm neutral <laughs> um but that could be it it could be a codependent relationship a toxic re marriage um that it's existing but it's, it's in the way, and so you're not comfortable. Or it could be somebody who's married to something else, like married to their work. Whatever it is, it's a, it's a connection, that, that, a toxic connection. Not necessarily a 3D marriage that just came. Could be both. Could be both of those. In any case, further advice to this masculine um, energy in your life and or your masculine half is inner child. So something through um, that this inner child still like has to say and clear up and could be um, one of the things that's been like prohibiting you from moving forward because there's something from the past that has to be dealt with. And this, again, can be connected to uh, not only air signs, but maybe specifically an Aquarius um, with these stars over the throat, third eye, and crown chakra. Um, there's something that needs to be spoken, something that's never been like discussed and worked out and healed. And if you do have... Um, I was going to say, I was going to say, if you do have siblings here, it could have something to do with them, but I guess it could have something to do with the brother you just lost to something that went unsaid that you feel that you didn't get to say, or that he feels that he didn't get to say to you. Um, and it's not too late for you guys to, again, send those messages to one another electronically. And it's not too late for you to release any guilt or anything that's attached to, to that relationship. Like if you didn't do enough to help or something, you can, uh, uh, you know, it's not too late. Um... I started with this for you and I'm back to it, this emergence. Just keep rising, basically. Keep rising. You're on the right path. So again, you know, there's no need for you to harbor any guilt. You didn't do anything wrong. There's no, you know, ill feelings between you. He's fine. And you can still speak to one another, talk to one another. Maybe not in the same way, but you can still. You're just on different planes. Um, masculine energy in your life and or part of you, half of you, guided to go after one's passions. Pursue passions vigorously. 
and this guy is back on your side. Remember I said this was probably connected to you, like your this is your like your inner masculine um, that needed to be toned down some. It's back. So we're gonna work on that um, and trying to get into like a more su surrendered place. Because um, we don't want to be like overly independent. We definitely don't want to be codependent. That's not healthy either. We see that that's toxic. But we don't want to be overly independent either. We want to be, if we, especially if we're gonna want to pursue romance with somebody, we want to be able to be interdependent. That I can stand on my own two feet and you can stand on your own two feet, but at the same time we, we are able to harmoniously work, come and work together. Masculine half, the world, a job well done, joy, contentment, and gratitude, and the path toward enlightenment. Um, this represents for me what, what I call a party of three, and there is like something else that, I think that there's so many things coming out of this masculine half, like there's so, these cards have so many meanings, and so many people are coming through with them. Um, but one <laughs> involves a party of three, and maybe this connection with this, masculine energy that I was feeling that felt married to something or someone um they are like coming out of that and it, it may take some time the universe is helping them to ease their way out of that situation so it may require some patience but it is happening And for you, the page of air who is logical, honest, impulsive, and curious, challenging information, delays or changes to plan. This could be delays, right? Patience required. Also truth delivered without tact. The page of air is a Gemini, Aquarius, like the Gemini, like the lovers. So that person could be here. And it's like a lot of players on the table, a lot of characters. Um, a Lib Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. I definitely think for one thing, it's connected to the, um, the patience that's required here with the energy of the world. And the masculine side, separation, time apart from your partner is on the horizon. So as it relates to, again, this person that has to work through some sort of issue in their life and the universe is helping them to, to work through that, um, separation from them. Also separation um, from your brother because you have, you know, suffered, unfortunately, that loss. Um, but he is still around you. He is, has just moved to an alternate plane of existence. So we have some physical separation, but know that he's still there. And again, you can still communicate and you can release any of these um, thoughts, feelings, sentiments that you wanted to share with him. You can release those uh, into the universe. And uh, as far as the masculine energy that is surrounding you in terms of uh, romantic pursuit there's a strong magnetic attraction there which again um i guess they're reiterating too um may very well be of a sexual nature and um and an absolutely valid means of expressing your love i hope that you enjoy this reading and find it helpful namaste angel Touch the ground.